Why is it in the air? We don't know what's going to come up. We don't know what's going to come down. So, today's podcast, I'm very excited about. A lot of moving pieces to it. So, uh, let's get right to it. It is about crafting and beer. So, uh, that being said, the crafting part, I have two great interviews with two great, uh, fantastic ladies. They are here to bring you their crafting knowledge. And actually, uh, one of them will be giving you a, a very play-by-play instruction on how to do uh, some really cool uh, woven sewn cards. And I, I'm sure I'm not doing it justice by saying woven or sewn, but you'll see what I'm talking about. So uh, I myself have not done a lot of crafting. I have done some uh, carpentry type uh, projects. I've done some PVC type projects, and I've done some other things here and there. Um, just trying to dip my toe into it. I had some time and I thought I would do it. Uh, and when I'm not working on my house, I am working on things like that. So, uh, I have a little, but not enough to really give you any information about how to do crafting or anything like that. So I thought it was best to leave it to the experts. So I get, I have two interviews here. Uh, we're going to go right into the first one. Uh, her name is Keisha. And Keisha is was nice enough to provide uh, an interview with me, and I talked to her yesterday. And I used to work with her, a fantastic lady. She will uh, talk a little bit about the crafts that she does, uh, and in particular things using a cricket. Which, if you don't know what a cricket is, she will explain to you in the interview. And so let's just go straight and get to it. Let's go straight to the interview with Keisha. So uh, take it away, interview Hav. Hey, thanks, uh, podcast Hav. Hey, everybody, interview Hav here. And uh, today we have uh, Makisha uh, Caldwell, and she is going to tell us a little bit about the crafting that she does. And so, uh, and we'll go from there. So, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, Keisha? Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Keisha. I am. Um pretty new to Austin. I'm originally from New England. Yeah, Patriots. Um, there, I know, I know. Everybody, I don't even like football. I don't know why I said that. Um, I shouldn't say that too loud. Uh, so I am an avid crafter. Um, if you can make it, I probably have. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about you know, what I've made and kind of how, how I've done it, I guess. <laughs> I okay. Know. Well, so, uh, so, you said you've done a lot of crafting right prior to the, the interview. And so what are the different types of crafting that you've done in the past as opposed to what you're doing now? Yeah. Okay. So I have knitted, I have sewn, I've, I quilted for a little while. Um, lots of various like small woodworking things, jewelry making. Okay. Um, and most recently uh, the cricket has been my obsession and that's like, that's a whole, like, that's an umbrella. And then there's like crafts underneath it that it can do. So it's like a whole multi thing. Um, and I don't know if this is necessarily a craft, but, um, I did face and body paint for a long time. That was a big thing. Eh, Kind of ish, something creative, but yeah. Nice. There's a lot of small things in between that I can't remember now. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's great. It looks like you're a Jane of all trades. You do all the uh, different types of crafts you get interested in. So what get, what, how do you decide on, I want to start doing this, or I want to start doing that? How do you make that decision on, on why you, why, or why, or, you know, why not you want to do it? Um, I see it. And then I am like, wow, it looks cool. I'm going to do that. So my husband actually makes fun of me. He thinks it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> usually I will see something really cool. Yeah. Um, it's usually something that I could buy. So it's like, oh, look at this cool piece of jewelry. And I'm like, what? A hundred dollars? No way. I'm going to make that. And then it turns into a craft. Um, and that's actually how the cricket got started. Um, so I was a professional face painter and, um, glitter tattoos became super popular and you have to have like this little stencil, right? Yeah. But they were like 75 cents a piece. So if you're doing like a hundred kids that adds up, right? Cause it's one use only. Yeah. Um, and I was like, Shh. I could do that myself. And then I bought a cricket to do it myself. And that expanded into this whole other beast. Um, So it usually starts like that. Okay. Well, now for those in the audience who don't know what a cricket is, why don't you explain what the cricket is? 
Okay, so it's a it's a cutting machine, um, and it's a flatbed cutter. So um, if you've seen, I'm trying to think. I'm sure. Do a quick Google search. It's super popular. Um, so basically, it it can cut just about anything that will fit underneath it. So it's like it, you put it on this little board, and it like goes in. So um, you know, you can put a design into the computer and it'll cut it out of some of the crickets, cut it out of fabric or vinyl, um, mm -hmm. thin pieces of wood, paper, paper's a really big one. So do you need the Cricut software for that or how do you? Yeah. So Cricut has a software that's, um, web-based and it's called design space. And so you use that. It just comes with it though. You don't have to pay for it. Okay. Um, they have like a subscription program for like their extra stuff. It's like an upsell, you know, of course. um, but you don't, if you have if you have digital design skills, even a little bit of them, you don't really need that software because you can make these things yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of taking it a step further. That's going past crafting to more of like digital art. Um, well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, you're still doing a craft out of it, so I mean, it's not that's a bad true. Idea, that's so. true. And craft and art, they like border each other, you know. That's Sometimes right. That's fun, right. Yeah. Well, very cool. So, um, all right. So you said you had some things that you wanted to show us. Uh, so why don't you show us and, and take us through what they are. So I generally don't keep the things I make. I, I give them away. So these are just the very few things that happen to be in the house. Um, mm -hmm. So I do, so vinyl and paper are the things that I use the most. I don't really, I didn't really craft with the Cricut and fabric and things like that. I didn't go into that. Um, so this is one of the things that I made. This is made of paper. Um, and so you cut out the little, 2D pieces, and then you glue them together into a 3D thing. Uh -huh. um, this design isn't mine. I just made it. Um, there are things that I have designed. Uh, I made beer mug um, boxes for my sister's uh, 30th birthday that had nice. like gifts inside of them. They were really cool. They looked like beer mugs and they had like nips and candy and things in them. Yeah. For you guys in Texas, a nip is an airplane bottle. I'm not being gross. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so there's that. And so that's the kind of stuff. I like those, that's what I like to make um, okay. the most. I think it's really interesting to take something that's two dimensional and make it three dimensional. And I really like to design that stuff. Um, it's a lot of geometry, which I never thought I would ever use when I was in high school. And now I'm like, oh, I should have paid attention. Should have paid attention. Um, there you go, people. Geometry works. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then things like this. So this is a, a light, this should be a light box. This is a prototype. Um, so what I would do with these, and I actually sold these for a little while, um, I would, this is a pre-made frame cause it's just a prototype, but I, I handmade frames. So there's some of that woodworking. Um, and then I would put lights in the back of it and then these cutouts that I designed. So this is actually something that I designed an illustrator and then put into the thing. So this is four, five, five layers. So each layer is a, a depth. And uh -huh. then with the lights behind it, it's really pretty. Um, so I made those for a little while and sold them. Um, I think I've, I think I made like 15 designs. So. Very cool. Oh, oh sorry. There, you're back. I got a phone call. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got another This call. is what my family does. My family will call me 50 times because they think that I'm like in a ditch somewhere. I'm like, no, I just, of course, it's this early in the morning, of course, yeah. you're in a ditch. So. Yeah, clearly, clearly. Um, but yeah, so these are just some of the things that you could do with it. Um, and then vinyl stuff, um, the biggest use for those is uh, like wall decals. I've done a bunch of those. Uh -huh. You know, you, you stick them up on the wall. Right. Um, car decals, a lot of car decals. In fact, my sister just had a baby and I made the entire family customize baby on board stickers. So mm -hmm. um, my sister's obsessed with Star Wars. So they got a Star Wars themed one. Um, my mom's obsessed with vampires, so we did a vampire theme one. And oh, cool. My dad's motorcycle guy. We did that. Yeah, so yeah. Um, it's fun. You can kind of customize your entire life. Excellent. Excellent. Very cool. And then what was the one that you wanted the, the, the show that Sophie did? Oh, yeah. So, like, I'm a mom, and especially during COVID, uh, you need you kind of need something, right? You can't just plop them in front of a screen. I mean, I guess you could, but yeah, you um, could, but I don't know if you should. But you could, yeah. <laughs> um, so some of the things that we do to keep busy have to do with crafts because I like to craft. Um, so this one I didn't make with her. She made this at preschool, but this is a good example of how you can take 
the things around your house and turn them into craft project to keep the kids busy. Um, wow. This is made out of a can. So I think it's a LaCroix can and then just, you know, a little canvas board and some paint. Um, and it was easy for them to do. I think I'm assuming they cut this, the teacher cut this, I would think um, so. but you know, the kids had a great time. Yeah, I would hope so. Um, and then we, uh, Sophie and I get a, like a subscription box from like a science uh, thing. And it has a craft in that every single time as well. Um, so, you know, like in that case, she's, she's learning while she's engaging with the craft project. So you can do stuff like that. Um, we do, we do craft projects, you know, that are based on like the color wheel or math based. So she's having fun, she's creating something and she's learning. So that's another like application for it. It doesn't have to be great. It's great. Useless, you know? Right. So, well, that's awesome. So we talked a little bit about the crafting. So tell me, um, a, a lot of people, you know, uh, have talked to me about crafting and how they, it's kind of, it's kind of a Zen for them as far as like, you know, taking your mind off of the modern day thing. So do you feel that same way? And, and what do you really like? Do you just kind of just move away out of your body type of thing when you're doing it? What do you, what do you do? Yeah, a hundred percent for sure. Um, I think that, uh, there's that. So you're like in this kind of creative space You're I call it in the zone. And then I think what's also really nice about it is that you, especially now, right? Like we don't have a lot of control over our lives. Um, it's scary. Things feel out of control, but with this, I am in control of that. I am making that. And there's an end game and there's this, I made this, this is something that I did and I was in control of and I created. And so, you know, when you're in it, you have to focus on it. So that takes yeah. your mind off of that. And then when you're finished with it, you have, you know, the satisfaction of making something which feels really good. And I think that that's, mm -hmm. um, you know, something that we need in, in kind of the, the state of the world right now. Like it's nice to have that. No, that's great. That's great. So, uh, two questions, uh, two questions at the end of the, for the end of the interview. The last, the, the first one is, uh, Say someone in our audience listening here doesn't never done any crafting at all. And and there are quite a few people out there that never done any crafting at all. Um, what would you advice or tip tips or tricks would you tell them uh, on how to start crafting? Go on YouTube. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, no. your friend. Um, you do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I would say start with something that interests you, right? Like, you, or a product that you would like to have, uh -huh. um, you know, so you're like, Hey, I really like that scarf. Okay. Well, like maybe pick that up and then also be patient with yourself. You're, you're not going to be like a master knitter or sewer or anything like that in the very beginning. And whatever you do pick, make sure it's not super complicated because you're just going to get frustrated and give up. So start small, I guess, um, and pick something that's going to hold your interest. Great. Fantastic. I don't know. <laughs> there are, there, there are some people, uh, believe it or not, that haven't done any crafting at all. And then and during this time when they have a lot more free time at home, yeah. they are like, well, you know, like you were saying, I don't want to pay for that. I can't I, either. Or I can't afford that. I think I can do it myself. And so they start yeah. looking up and you're right. Definitely the, the, the ease into it. Don't try to do some complicated piece of thing. Cause then you're right. They'll, you'll probably just be like, ah, screw it. I'm done. I don't want to do it anymore. And then you give up and then you worry, you? you're still back at square one and you're still sitting at home and still have exactly. that. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to be patient. And when you don't know how to do something, don't just give up YouTube and the internet. They aren't, they have every single answer that you could ever have a question. You know what I mean? Yep. So yep, like totally. it is at your fingertips. You can do it. Just look it up. There you go. Perfect. Perfect yeah. advice. <laughs> uh, okay. So the last one I've been asking most of my uh, people that I interview um, and it, ha it goes back to my movie podcast. So what I want from you is give me uh, two of your all time favorite movies that you can watch again and again. And then give me one that people would be surprised that you actually love to watch. Oh, my God. OK, so Pan's Labyrinth. I could watch that movie forever. It is my favorite movie Fantastic. of all times. Um, and I really love Garden State. That is like another okay. movie that I just love. Yeah. 
um, in fact, you know, the, the scene where they're standing on the bulldozers just screaming into that massive hole. Yeah. I feel like that's 2020 for me. <laughs> so I actually have that scene <laughs> on the back, on the backdrop of my computer on my computer desktop. So I love that movie. Those two are like hands down my favorite movies. And um, a surprising one I think would be Spirited Away. Um, I don't like anime, like at all. Oh. Um, and I, I love that movie a lot. And I don't know if it's just nostalgia or what, but that is also one of my favorite movies. And I think that would be surprising if you know me. That wouldn't be yeah, like on my I was actually more surprised that you didn't like anime. I thought for sure you would like anime. Yeah, <laughs> no. No. I really don't. You know why? I think I, I grew, I was a little bit too old to hit like the Pokemon and whatever that other one was that was super yeah. popular. Yeah. Yeah. But I was old enough to like know it and be around the people that were obsessed with it, but not old enough to like it myself. And it annoyed me. Yeah. So I think there's just this like association with like the annoying kids that were crazy about it. That makes me not like it. I don't know if it's necessarily, you know what I mean? It's like, what if, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. And I was definitely not in that uh, era of Pokemon either. So, uh, but I, so I get you on the Pokemon, but, uh, but Spirit Away is a fantastic, is a fantastic movie. So uh, even even if you look at it outside of the realm of, of anime, it's really good. So, right. Well, excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to have you back on, I'm sure, for another episode. What I want to do eventually, and I've been talking about this, is try to get a panel of us going. Uh, and then we just, you know, each person picks a topic and we talk about it. And just kind of a quick thing like that. Plus, I'm sure, I know we're coming up uh, in the holiday season, so I might have you back to show some of your crafting as well. I'll have to get on it. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I mean, like Halloween and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I know sure. my brother already wants to do a pumpkin beer special uh, for Halloween. Can we do a pumpkin carving contest? Sure, why not? Yeah, uh, let's do that. I, I don't think I've carved a pumpkin in... Well, let's just not go there. It's, it's, it's quite a while, quite a while. Yeah. So, all right, cool. Well, uh, thank you again for your time. And we're going to throw things back to uh, Podcast Hub. So uh, Podcast Hub, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Hey, thanks, Interview Hub. Uh, fantastic uh, uh, interview there with Keisha. And uh, exciting to see all the different crafts that she can do. Uh, really cool to see the, uh, the craft, uh, craft work that her daughter Sophie did. Uh, but you can see that uh, Keisha's had a lot of skill and has a large skill set and is able to do a lot of different things on there. And so that comes in real handy uh, in this during this time when a lot of people have free time. So if you uh, are interested in anything that Keisha did or you're interested in getting a Cricut, uh, certainly you, you can look up Cricut, uh, which is not spelled like the insect, so don't be, uh, don't be fooled. Um, or if you want to reach out and you have questions for uh, Keisha, please leave them in the comments below on my YouTube channel for this episode, and I will uh, get them to her, and then I'll get, I'll get back to you. Um, if the, you have any crafts that you yourself have done and you'd like to have them uh, highlighted, Please send me a uh, picture, send me a direct message, or put in the comments below on how I can reach you. And I can uh, reach out and start showing those pictures on my next podcast. So if anybody's interested in, in showing their craft work, their handiwork, please send it to me. Uh, and if you haven't already, please uh, plug for myself. Please uh, add uh, yourself as a subscriber to my YouTube channel, Javier in the Air, uh, We where we try to get as many things as possible here uh, I'm trying to do my best to grow it and keep gaining people and keep gaining interviewees uh, so that we can uh, keep this going so without further ado I'm gonna go to the uh, tutorial uh, it's basically a tutorial that uh, Zyda is doing um, Zyda Pavlovsky that she's been on the show before uh, two doors down neighbor uh, she has these really cool sewn uh, cards and I know I'm not doing it justice by just saying a sewn card these are fantastic I've received one for uh, Christmas but I believe these are uh, Halloween ones so I'm gonna go ahead and just send it right over to her and then when we come back we'll start talking about the other part of the show so here is Zyda and her cards hi I'm Zyda Pavlovsky I would like to show you how to make these Halloween postcards minor skulls in a garden the garden is 
The stems are different decorations going down from the skull and then from the air. Now to make these, you will need several things. You will need these pieces and some material and different colored thread. Now the first item you'll need is called Steamacine 2. And you will need some Pellon double-sided fusible ultra firm stabilizer. Now the stabilizer is rough on both sides, which means the material will adhere to it on both sides when the iron is adhered to it with material. You can get some that only the material will adhere to it on one side, but you want it on both sides. So to tell the difference, it's rough on both sides. Now the steam is seam is gridded on one side and not on the other. You want to trace on the gridded side. It's got yellow grids on it. Now you want a half a yard of the Pellon, which is the rough one, and a half a yard of the steam and seam. And then you want a yard of white material and preferably solid white. If you get the white that's shiny on one side and dull on the other, you want to put the shiny side onto the back of your card when you iron it because when you write on it, you cannot write on the shiny side. It will blur. So remember that, shiny side down onto the card. Okay, now what we need to do is you need to have white bobbin thread in your bobbin. Always white in your bobbin thread and different colors in your top of your thread. So Cut your pellon, which is this thicker one, into a four and a half by six inch size. And iron your background fabric, which mine is black, onto one side. And you only need to iron it for about 10 seconds. Then cut out your design, which mine are skulls, from your steam seam. And when you cut it out from your steam seam, then you peel it from one side and the sticky side should be on your, on your skull or whatever design you have. And then you stick it onto your card like so, and then you iron them. And we'll iron them in a minute. After all the pieces are done, cut the card into a four by six square. Now, let me show you the materials that I have to make your card. I have several kinds of materials. Here's my skull. I have several skulls. I have some house haunted house, some bats, I have some bats, I have skulls, I have ghosts, I have haunted house, I have scary men, and these are my background. And again, here's my pillon and my steam machine. Now here are my threads over here that I use for the colors that I've used to make my original card. Now, as I said, you go ahead and iron these onto your card, which should take about five seconds, and then go to your machine and pick out your design that you want to use. But if you can, try to have an extra piece of your Pellon to practice your design before you put it on your card. And as I said, use different colors for your design on your card. Before you do any design work, you want to take your white piece of material and you want to iron it onto the back of your card. 
because as I said, your pelon is adhesive on both sides. So you want to do that first before you do any stitches. So you're gonna take your card, which looks like this, with all your designs on it, and put your shiny side, if you have one, down against the back and iron it, and then start doing your designs, such as this one, and then at the very end, do your border, and then at the end, you can do anything you want. I've done postcard with a scrilly sign, Happy Halloween, Zyda 2020. And that's the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed and happy sewing. Hey, great, great tutorial, Zyda. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much for, for having that there. Uh, everybody who is, are interested in doing it, uh, please re-watch the uh, video again so you can get the tutorial down. Also, uh, Zyda wanted me to let you know if anybody is interested in making some of them, uh, she is more than willing to help out. So just let me know and I will, be, and I will get you in contact with Zyda and then, um, and then you can even possibly share supplies if, you wanted, if you're really that interested in doing it. Uh, and you can talk, certainly talk to Zyda about it. She's more than willing and more than happy to uh, talk about it. And we also want to uh, give a shout out to the uh, Honey Bee Quilt Store, which is where Zyda gets a lot of these uh, um, materials and supplies. And so if you are interested in this kind of uh, crafting, by all means, reach out to the Honey Bee Quilt Store. They're a, very, a great group out there, uh, always willing to help out. And so they will be more than willing to help you, even if you come in and you say, look, I know nothing about crafting, but I saw these really cool cards, and I talked to Zyda, and now I want to get some materials. And they will be more than willing to help you out. So once again, thanks, Zyda. It's great. And uh, now we're going to go into the second portion of the show. Um, I'm a little excited about this. It's the first time I did it. Um, I decided to break my... Uh, staying only within you know a certain area of my house uh and my neighborhood so that uh you know we can avoid any you know not having to worry about social distance or having to worry about wearing a mask and everything so uh, uh my brother was insistent that i and uh, he and i go and try out uh, a new uh place for us uh, called Hop Squad. I know I may not call it Hop Squad in the in some of the videos, but uh, we were partaking in some libations, and uh, we w decided that we wanted to, or I decided that I wanted to get it on shot of us being there. Now, um, this is a first for me. I will be doing more of these. In fact, I'm going to try to get out to um, uh, Jenna and Scott out there at Brutique next week, so I can have have them that I've been talking about them day and night and now we'll not actually get to uh, see their location which I'm pretty stoked about uh, and this was just a spur of the moment trip that we did and so enjoy the videos I'm just gonna play them all uh, back to back we went to Hop Squad and we wound up going through the little uh, uh, fence k uh, door like a get like just a fence door um, uh, through there to Circle Brewery. So from Hop Squad, right around, uh, on basically just past the fence that you walk through and jump down, and then you're there at Circle Brewery. So uh, I have re this, this is going to be the reviews. Uh, I believe all the reviews that I'm going to do. Uh, we'll see how much time we have left at the end. Um, so it's fantastic. Uh, I think it. W I think this is going to pay off, and I think I'm going to start trying to travel. Uh, within safe means, don't worry, Ma, uh, within safe means, um, you know, the COVID uh, stuff going on still, and see what we can do and see who I can go out there and meet and uh, talk to uh, while keeping social distance. Now, this time, it was just uh, uh, my brother and I, we kept our social distance because we really didn't want to meet anybody and we didn't want to worry about any of that. So, uh, without further ado, here is our adventure in different parts to the um, Hop Squad Brewery and Circle Brewery. So let's uh, let's give it out to the uh, uh, traveling traveling hop. 
Hey everyone, Javier here, uh, doing a out and about, one of my first out and about, actually my first ever out and about for the podcast. Uh, so yeah, I'm doing the whole 3D thing. Uh, so uh, we are out here, we being uh, Robert and I, we are out here at the uh, Hop Squad, which is off of uh, Kramer, or on Kramer, uh, in the north side of Austin. And so we are here to try out some of their beers. So uh, I'll get with him. He's got a flight going, so we're gonna try some of it. I got a uh, Smash Mouth. So this is an IPA. So we'll check it out and I'll let you know by other video bits on how we're doing. Alrighty. Hey, so I'm back here with uh, Rob and I. We're doing a flight of beers today, uh, our Rob is. So uh, we're gonna switch over and see what we got here. So uh, this is the, where do we start with? This is the Ghost. This is a, what is it Rob? It's an amber. It's an amber? I, I didn't remember what it was. So. Not too bad. Uh, good on the finish. Um, not too not too strong on the front or anything like that. It's a nice little kind of a starter. This is uh, Holden? The, the Kaiser uh, Pale Ale. Alright, this is a Pale Ale right here. You can tell by the, the look of it. Definitely has that pale ale taste to it. A uh, little good on the uh, on the finish on the back end. By the way, the ghost uh, really didn't have much of a back end to it. It just kind of just goes down. Uh, so this is their um, hazy IPA. Hazy IPA. Lorena de junk. Lorena de what? Junk. Lorena de junk. Okay. <laughs> we'll get into beer names uh, in a much later podcast. Uh, so this is uh, this is actually pretty good. Good front end too, a little bit on the back end. Um, so here's uh, the last one. This is the Lord Zante. The Lord Zante. It's kind of loud in here, so hopefully you're getting all my thing. It's a little bit better. I, I, I like this IPA. It's got a good finish to it. So overall, I would say uh, probably five thumbs. Five thumbs. Maybe six thumbs, and this one I'm gonna give a seven thumbs. And then the Hash Mash IPA, uh, I'd probably give it a six thumbs up. So uh, there's our adventure out in the Hop Squad, and don't worry, Boutique, I'll be going out to you again uh, next week and uh, getting an interview with you, Scott. So uh, that's it from Hop Squad, thanks. I know I said I was done, but I'm not done. So here's my flight, a Pilsner, a Saison, uh, an IPA, and another IPA. So uh, let's give it a shot. Pilsner are very light and refreshing. Uh, not much of a real taste to it or an aftertaste to it, just kind of there. Uh, I'm gonna give that one four thumbs up. Uh, this is the Saison. Much better on the taste, uh, no real aftertaste, no Nothing on the back end, a little bit on the front end. I'm gonna give that one five thumbs up. Uh, here is their Fresh Smash IPA. You can see the color. A Little bit more in the, in the taste, heading more towards the juicy, but still not something super good, you know, super fantastic. I'm gonna give that one six uh, thumbs up. Uh, and actually that one is very bland. It has almost no taste to it at all. It tastes just like water. So I'm gonna give that one four thumbs up. One of the lowest ratings I've ever given. Uh, yeah, so there we go. Okay, so um, I know we said we were only gonna go to uh, Hopsville, but we decided to go ahead and go to uh, Circle Brewery, which is right down the street. So if, if, for those of you who were watching my entire video, you'll notice that we did a, I did a Circle Alibi uh, beer review last week or two weeks ago, maybe last week. Uh, so here we are at Circle Brewery. Uh, there's Rob working on his phone because he's a millennial. And uh, so yeah, so here we are. I went with the Party Pig. Uh, it's over there. If I zoom in, I, I think I can zoom in. Yeah, so right there, the Party Pig. 9.0 uh, ABV. And uh, now I'm doing uh, let's zoom back out and uh, this is it this is a uh, imperial porter uh, it's chocolate velvety and unruly it says let's try it 
really good. It's a really good porter. Uh, it has that taste of a porter to it, which is like a little bit on the heavy side, but it's what you want from a porter. Uh, it finishes well. Uh, and by the way, we're just down the street from the um, from Hopsfield, so uh, we decided to stop in here. Uh, what? Oh, Hop Squad. Hop Squad. Uh, I, th I think my brother's drunk. Not me, but he is. So anyway, uh, uh, we're new with the party pig. What did you wind up having, Rob? The double blur. Uh, so he had the doppel blur, uh, which is 7.7. .7. It's a Hefeweizen. Uh, it's supposed to have a sweet banana cream to it, taste to it. So what do you think? Eight thumbs up. Eight thumbs up. Look at that. Eight thumbs up on that one. I'm going to go ahead and give this one eight thumbs up as well. So there we go from uh, Circle Brewing. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Great time. Great time at the, at the breweries. Um, so once again, I was at Hop Squad, Hop Squad, not Hop Fields, Hop Squad, and then I was at um, Circle Brewery. So uh, I had a great time while I was out there. Um, we enjoyed everything. Um, we did, uh, you know, I have uh, uh, to uh, let our audience, my audience know, I have lost a little weight lately, so... Uh, that beer may have hit me quicker than I thought, so I apologize if I sound a little. Um, also, uh, thanks my brother for uh, being the DD and uh, driving me out there and uh, making sure I made it home. And so um, it's always a great time when you can uh, go out and enjoy some uh, new and different uh, beer or wine or anything else that you may be interested in beer in our case of course um, and so it was great to go out there and actually do a review uh, on site and so like I said I will be reaching out to uh, Scott and Jana for uh, setting up some time next week for going out to Brutique uh, so I've mentioned I've name dropped a lot of things uh, on this podcast so uh, once again shout out to uh, Honey Bee Quilt Store uh, if you're looking for uh, good um, um, source materials and supplies and you're interested in quilting and crafting and, and well, quilting and sewing and uh, anything along those lines, um, Honey Bee is the place to go. Uh, thanks again for Zyda and, and Keisha for being interviewed. Uh, thanks for uh, my brother for being a good sport for uh, being there. And so I always learn a little something while I make these podcasts and this time I learned a lot including how not to turn the phone where you're in the midst of a video because it doesn't really change the perspective. Uh, and so I apologize for uh, part of it kind of just being uh, sideways, but uh, you got the gist of it, so it was all good. Um, so next time, I am look, I'm always looking for themes, so if you have an idea and you're, and you're wanting to share it with me, please direct message me. Uh, reach out to me on Facebook, respond in the comments below on my YouTube channel, and that is once again uh, Javier in the Air. And if you want to um, have a, something that you're passionate about that you want to talk about to me with and are willing to be interviewed and be on my show, then certainly uh, drop me a line and uh, we'll go from there. And uh, as you can see, these, these interviews are great fun, everyone has a great time. So think about a theme. I'm always looking for a theme as well, so in fact I'm looking for a theme for next week's uh, show. We are still in September, so I won't be starting any Halloween-esque um, themes, uh, but I will be doing that in October. So I had a great idea from uh, Keisha, and so uh, I will probably be instituting that. Uh, in fact, I'll let everybody know now, if you are interested in carving a pumpkin and are willing to not only show it on video, but maybe show a little bit of you uh, cutting out the pumpkin with, uh, you know, your your spouse or with your kids, and are willing to um, have it on the show, then certainly, uh, by all means, uh, let me know so that I can get you on board uh, for the pumpkin ca carving that we're going to do in October. And in fact, I will have, uh, I just confirmed with my sponsor, who is uh, myself that I will be uh, offering up at least first prize and depending on how many entrants we have uh, perhaps even second and third prizes uh, for the best carved pumpkin so I will get uh, feedback from people on, on who they think is the best uh, pumpkin 
and we will go from there and so there will be a winner so that means you have to get your friends and family involved to watch the podcast and see whose pumpkin is the best um i recommend you uh having them watch the entire podcast because of course that's that's part of what i do so thanks again everybody uh it's been great uh this is javier signing off for javier in the air and i hope you have a good week and i will see you again uh next week so uh everybody have a good one